Always pools open. All three of us jump in and be like, uh, yeah. what was that movie? It's like some horrible horror movie. Oh, yeah. A drift. A drift or something. Or something. So that's like 13,000 feet of water. Awesome. God, it's so blue. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Oh man, it's so cool. So we are in the motoring phase of our passage right now, and what we were looking for was a light easterly. Um, we are back in the trade winds, so it usually blows consistently 15 to 20, um, and we were lucky enough to find a hole that coincided with our crew coming in, and we're seeing about 12 over the deck, so probably six to seven knots true. Um, so we're gonna motor for two days or so to where it came in, where we can finally make our turn south. And right now we're crossing the Gulf Stream, um, so the water temps have risen and we're getting a little pushed up north towards Cuba. But there's a pretty cool back eddy we're going to grab off the south coast of Cuba. So we'll be motoring for a couple days and then hopefully we'll shut that engine off and get some sail again. This wind angle can't be sailed, but that just means that so far, this passage is going according to plan. It's the morning of the first day of what will be a seven-day offshore sail from Mexico, where Calico Skies has just departed from, to Panama. Hi, <laughs> honey. Have a good trip. Me and I miss you. Yeah, I'm sure, man. I have opted out of this sail for the first time and have already arrived to Panama City, while Bill is just setting out on a 900-mile journey with the help of Brandon and Andre, the two crew who jumped aboard. So we do, we fish with a hand line. We don't the rods and reels, it's much easier to deal with. Very simple. My lucky lower, squid skirt, and on the metal leader, which is good for sharp mouth fish. Make sure you spit on it. And all you do is let it spin out. And then the bungee is a shock absorber. They put that through. Well, Captain Bill, how are we making out? Pretty good. I'm enjoying the sun being uh, down in the clouds right now. It's a little cooler. Yeah. Feels good though, right? Yeah, for sure. Exactly.
looking at it. Yeah, I'm not really like a fan about this. Right on. Well, you guys have a good rest of your afternoon, and we just want to say hello and see what's up. Awesome, man. Come back to one thing. Fun to have someone else out there in the yeah. crazy food fence. That's the great thing about a bunny farm, right? Yeah. All right, where's that fish? We just had some excitement. Uh, we just had a fish on the lure and then off. So we're setting up some rattlers. Rattlers. Broken top lip, beer can. Let's go. Here we go. This is my hotel room. It's actually very spacious. Uh, and we've got, got a nice window view, got a little couch. Not that I'll be using it much. Nice big bed, bathroom. Um, and one of the reasons I got this hotel was for the kitchenette. Um, I already went out and got some coffee and some fruit and stuff. Um, and obviously I got the desk, which is great. It's not a very expensive hotel. I got one of the cheapest, uh, cleanest ones that I could find, because um, obviously I'm on a pretty tight budget. Uh, but yeah, if I cook some of my meals myself, breakfast and lunch and some dinners and stuff, um, that will help a lot. And yeah, it seems like a very nice hotel so far. Everybody's really, um, really helpful with my poor Spanish. Uh, and again, I'm gonna be editing a lot. So that's where I'm gonna be spending a lot of my time anyway, is in this hotel. Um, hopefully I can get out and do some fun stuff, but um, yeah, it's in a pretty safe neighborhood too for Panama. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I have a lot to keep me busy, so I don't spend all my time thinking about Bill and where he is and what's going on with the crew. So, that's a good thing. So we got day two that we're out. Uh, 
wind is calm, crazy calm. Uh, we're seeing one knot, one and a half knot of wind. Uh, we're making more breeze than we're seeing. We got a bit of traffic, it looks like a big container, and then uh, a big tanker as well. Noon now or something? 11? Sure. 24 hours in? We've had a pretty pretty good run so far. It's pretty smooth out here. You do some guacamole? No. What do you guys say about that? The guac's really good. I think, I think we're going to go for a swim in a little bit. What are we, we're probably in like 16 or 17,000 feet of water, so that'll be kind of cool. Yeah, wash off some man musk. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot and sweaty up in here. <laughs> balcony of a hotel um, which has a great view of Panama and I just I can't stop thinking about how quickly it, it was to get here in a two and a half hour flight and Bill is just I don't even know maybe 50 miles or something out of a thousand mile trip I don't know I checked his tracker looks like he's heading uh, towards Cayman like he wanted to um, but I heard from him everything's great but man it's just like it is mind-blowing how fast you can get places by plane <laughs> it's mind-blowing when you don't usually go by plane um, so those are my musings for today um, I have a lot of edit work to do so I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in the hotel I got basically nothing done last week um, it was super busy when the crew arrived and there's just so much to do um, and, Bill broke his toe from the slack lining, so he he wasn't in great shape, so I had to do a lot. Um, so I am gonna edit a lot, but I can't wait to explore a little bit um, of this city. I'm looking forward to that, and there's a pool. I'll probably try and hit that when it's sunny. Um, it was overcast when we came in, and it, I know it rains a lot here, so um, whenever it's like this, I'm gonna try to take advantage of between editing. Um, but I'm pretty pumped. I'm excited to be in a new city. Um, Oh, I just cannot wait till Bill gets in, so I will be following that tracker and um, we'll be emailing each other every day, so we'll see. Always pools open. Oh, ladder. All three of us jump in and be like, uh, yeah. what was that movie? It's like some horrible horror movie. Oh, yeah. A drift. A drift or something. But we have a GoPro. Yeah, no one will ever see the footage. Finds it, yeah. We'll attach a float to it of some yeah, sort. Hey, don't think I'm gonna find it in 13,000 feet of water. Bye, Andre. See you later. You, yeah, it's just a preventer line, but it'll work. It's out there. Oh my God, it's so blue. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So that's like 13,000 feet of water. Look at look how blue it is going down there. Actually, you can see like little planktons and stuff in there, though. There's like a little bit of life in there. I wonder if that's like the bioluminescent stuff to see. Yeah, it's cold down there too. Oh man, it's so cold.
down there. It's downloading weather, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully you'll see no more motoring. So we're trying to decide whether we should uh, go to Cayman to get more fuel or keep on trucking. The models are saying we need another two days and four hours, which is, what, like 48 hours plus uh, four, so 52 hours. 52 hours of motoring, and we have been burning 0.68, so that means we need 35 gallons of diesel, and we have about 38 on board. So we're leaving ourselves a three-gallon buffer. Um, we're not sure if Cayman will let us in. I emailed them before asking for permission, but um, I never got a reply back. So, uh, in a sailing route, ideally we would head more south to Cayman and we would start sailing now, but um, if we need fuel, we have to keep motoring. So we're kind of at a decision point here. I don't really know what to do yet. The image is a little bit blurry on Bill's laptop, but he's looking at the latest weather download and predict wind. If he heads further south now, most likely the engine can be shut off and the wind angle sailed. But it's not guaranteed because predicted wind is light and any decrease means the engine goes back on. If models are correct, however, and Bill continues on his course towards Cayman and does not point the bow more south, then the next two days will be spent motoring, leaving a precious three gallons of diesel, which may not be the worst scenario if refueling in Cayman was an option. With COVID, it's hard to say. So Bill has to take a gamble and decide whether to risk heading south now, not be able to sail at some point and have to turn around and head back to Cayman, or continue on to Cayman, motoring all the way and consuming all the fuel. At the moment, the wind has come up slightly, which is not in the forecast, but it's enough to set the sails, so for now, that's what the boys are going to do. Yep. Uh, I'm going to push the halyards out because it's going to be in front of the mast instead of inside the mast. Andre, and we'll uh, yep. so the starboard sheet. Get the open channel. We're able to get some sailing in here. I think the engine's been off for like three or four hours, which really helps our cause. Um, we're flying under white sails now. We were under code zero, but it got a little hectic, of course, as I was cooking dinner. That's how it always goes. Um, and they always say the way to get more wind is put up a light air sail, which we did. Um, okay, you can see we're sailing along nicely, though.
sometimes every hour, brings a new challenge. Tomorrow, Bill has to decide what route to take, but that's not the only test he and the crew will face over the remaining five days and 600 miles of this passage. I don't think I've ever seen another sailboat out into literally a pirate ship. I think it's cool. Join us next time and see what happens. Plus, watch what I get up to on my solo adventure in Panama.